Welcome back and thank you for joining the NCTM session, Flipping Out Achievement for ELLs and Students with Special Needs. In this short video, we're going to be talking about flipping out on acronyms, especially the acronyms UBD, DI, and UDL. Throughout this session, I'm going to be talking about the flipped classroom and mainly the relationship with UDL, Universal Design for Learning, but often this gets confused with two other very prominent types of curriculum frameworks. The first is UBD, Understanding by Design, DI, Differentiated Instruction, and of course, UDL, Universal Design for Learning. Let's take a look at these three frameworks to see if we can differentiate them from each other and see how they all work together cohesively in a well-run classroom. The first framework is Understanding by Design. This has been given the tagline, Plan with the Goal in Mind. There are mainly three stages to this. The first is that you identify the desired results. This is talking about standards and objectives. Then you determine acceptable evidence. How will you assess the students? The third stage is to plan the learning experiences and instructions. Understanding by design is often called backwards design. So you think about the goal first and you work backwards to the everyday learning experiences and instruction. The second framework is differentiated instruction. This tagline may be planned with the learner in mind. So each student comes to our classroom with different sets of needs. This is not new to us. We see it every day in our classroom and in every class. Differentiated instruction allows us to meet the learning goals and needs of these different learners by modifying the content, the process, and the product. Meeting students' needs is really based on their readiness when they come into their class, their interest, and also their learning preference. Readiness is often thought of content level, interest may also be thought as motivation, and learning preference is also often referred to as learning style. The third framework, and the one that we will be focusing most of our time on, is universal design for learning. Now why would I begin by showing this architecturally well-designed and aesthetically pleasing kitchen? Universal design for learning originated from the concept of universal design in engineering and architecture. Universal design in engineering and architecture is built around the idea that anything that is needed to accommodate someone with a physical disability is already built into the design and does not need any additional planning or modification. For example, if you or someone in your family suddenly needed to be in a wheelchair in this kitchen, you would not need to modify any of the existing structures. Already, there is plenty of space for a wheelchair to move in, there's open spaces, and nothing additional would need to be done to remove the barriers for a wheelchair. In this example as well, here is a nice set of stairs, but there is also built into the design a place for someone in a wheelchair to move up and down the stairs without needing an additional mechanical lift or anything excessive. In short, the accommodations are already existing in the original plan. This connects very well to Universal Design for Learning, where we talk about removing all barriers for students, perhaps even before we know who our students are or what their needs will be. One of the main ideas behind Universal Design for Learning is that you can respect the needs of all the students by removing the barriers to education beforehand, which often results in reducing the amount of individual modification that is necessary. Now, all three of these things work together very nicely. For example, if somebody needs individual modification, of course, differentiated instruction would work well, and we do want to plan backwards with the goal in mind, thinking about assessments first. But UDL is about giving everyone equal access to education. In a way, it's like inherent differentiation. It's differentiation that is built into the lesson plan. Over the past year when I was studying Universal Design for Learning, this is when I got really excited about this topic. My students with Autism Spectrum Disorder and my future English language learners come into the classroom with barriers in place. A student with a language barrier potentially has no difference in ability, motivation, or readiness. Perhaps even they've seen more content than the students in the classroom. But can they access the content in the same way as the first language learners? No, they can't. They could not understand one lecture, get behind one day, and we all know the snowball effect that would happen by the end of the semester, by the end of the quint, by the end of the quarter. This student is far behind. The same is true with many students with learning disabilities. Are they unable to learn the content? Do they have no background knowledge? Do they have no interest in learning the content? None of these things are true. Perhaps a learner just needs more time to access the content. Perhaps a learner needs to practice it twice as much. Perhaps a learner needs to rewind things twice as much. Of course, the flip classroom is on a magic pill and it's not going to cure all the problems with, with education. And it may not even help every student with learning disabilities or every English language learner. But the flipped classroom has some very specific characteristics that are part of it that really help to remove the barriers for many students in the classroom. 
In our next video, we're going to work through the UDL framework and talk about how the flipped classroom really does provide multiple means of representation, multiple means of action and expression, and multiple means of engagement. Make sure you also are visiting the reference video where I go through and list all the references I've used throughout the whole series. And I'm also going to give you a link to a Dropbox folder, which is going to be filled with a whole bunch of articles and academic research and suggestions. Have a good day, and we'll see you in the next video. Everybody,